Welcome to True View. I'm Jamie Shaver. And I'm Julie Van Gore. And today we're talking about descending into greatness. Stay tuned and you'll hear how to be humble in a world that exalts pride. Thank you. Julie, I remember someone asking me if I thought I could ever be a person to like do pedicures and do this kind of work. And I said, no. Why was that? I just can't even imagine it. It just seems like I don't know, just like gross and dirty feet and I just can't imagine it having to work on other people's feet. Well, it would certainly take a lot of humility. I mean, even just think of the posture of where you're, you're below the person and the other person's above. I mean, it takes somebody who's willing to humble themselves. Julie, what do you think is the most obnoxious thing about pride? How does it hurt us the most? That's such a good question, Jamie. There are so many things about it, but probably the thing more than anything, it keeps us from being in relationship with other people because we really are setting ourselves in such a place that we can't be on the same place with them. I mean, I'm even thinking as I'm sitting in this chair right now, it's harder for me to have a relationship with Brittany as she's working here because we're not the same level. And if we continue to elevate ourselves with pride, it separates us from other people. And more than anything else, it separates us from God. Well, I'm looking forward to just the more discussion that we're able to have about how truly to kind of root out that pride and become humble so we can bring glory to God. The essence of a Christian, Jamie, I think the most important characteristic is humility. And we see that again when in Philippians 2, we're called to have the same attitude that Jesus had, that he humbled himself and was willing to submit to even death on a cross. And he didn't consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself as nothing. And again, he demonstrated that in every aspect of his life. Again, leaving the glories of heaven to come and humble himself to be born in a manger instead of, you know, in a throne room, but to be born in a stable with a, in a stinky, you know, it was a stinky manger at that point. And then we look and say he was even willing to humble himself and wash the feet of the disciples as one of the last acts before he went to the cross and took that to the full extreme. And absolutely. And even humbling himself to say, I'm no match for God, like obeying him. That's right. And I feel like without a humble spirit, we truly can't obey and follow God because it takes that humility to believe and trust and to be willing. That really that humility to say, I am willing to surrender my will to someone else, even if I don't agree, even if I don't like it, even if it's not gonna feel good. Like right now, that's right. I mean, what, she, what Brittany's doing with my feet right now, it kind of hurts a little bit, but I'm submitting myself because ultimately I have to trust she knows what's better for me. And so for us with the Lord is to humble ourselves and say, I know and trust you know what is better for me, but when we exert our own will, we're really setting ourselves up for destruction. As again, the Word of God says, pride, a prideful spirit, or pride comes before the fall and destruction. Welcome to True View, where today's topic is really descending into greatness. We're going to be talking about pride and what it costs us and humility and what that will bring us in life. And we couldn't think of any better guest to have with us today than President of Enduring Hope Ministries and founder, Melissa Pierce, Thank as you. well as Cindy Dodds, the Executive Director from Penn Christian Academy, as well as my awesome co-host, Julie, and who also acts as our Bible scholar here. Um, ladies, what does humility really mean? 
One of the ways, well, there's so many ways to define it, and God talks about it throughout the scriptures, but I love what he says in Proverbs 22, 4, humility is the fear of the Lord. Because when we really get where we are and understand who we are in relationship to a holy God, we really are going to have no response other than to be humble before him. Because when we consider his, his awesomeness, we will see we're incapable of anything apart from him. Yeah. And I think to tie in with that, Julie, I, I view humility as a heart condition. Yes. yes. It's not about self-indulgence, self-ambition. It's really having a reverence to the Almighty, first and foremost. Um, and just that um, humbleness to um, honor Him yes. in everything that we do. Right. When, you, I, yeah, right. when I think of humility, I think of... A, a Christ likeness, a hunger for God yeah. in the way that Christ sought Him. Yeah. And in what ways does pride hurt us when we choose not to have our heart towards God? Mm. Well, pride and humility cannot coexist. And when we know that as Christians we've been called to be like Christ, and Christ says of himself, lo, I am humble and gentle of spirit. There was nothing of pride that was in Jesus. I mean, he left all the glories of heaven to descend to earth. We're talking about descending into greatness. He descended from um, heaven onto earth. And if we want to have fellowship with this incredible God, we have to rid ourselves of all of that pride. Anything that is elevating self over our relationship with God and who he is. Yeah. I also think pride, too, it, it, it can be very destructive. I mean, you can really sum it up that way. It's very destructive. Pride, because it's all about you. You, you are the center of the universe. And you can take pride into the many different ways. It, it can infect your relationships with your spouse, with mm -hmm. your kids, with your coworkers. And, and it just, if it's about you, Nobody wants to be around somebody no. where it's all about them, do you? No. You know? Right? Yeah, but then people will say, well, if it's not all about me, how am I going to get that promotion? Or if I'm going to be humble and like not make myself known, not make my work that I've done known, then aren't I just kind of a doormat and, and aren't I going to get that next thing? What, do you, what would you say to them, Cindy? Well, uh, I think that you can be humble and not be a doormat. Yeah, I think you can have confidence in who you are yeah. in Christ and have an authentic view of yourself in the gifts and talents that God has given you uh, and recognizing where those gifts come from. Uh, they're not something that we've done on our own, but they're gifts that God has given us. And when we recognize where these strengths come from and where our talents come from, then we can have a, a humble spirit, but be confident in that. Mm -hmm. and, and Jesus was anything but a doormat, and he's yeah. the yeah. <laughs> most humble person that, that is has so ever true. lived. You know? <laughs> he walked in complete confidence, but he was a pure vessel through which the Lord, his Father, could work. And he said, I only do that which my you know, Father is telling me to do and doing. Right. I only speak the words. So it was complete humility, complete surrender of self. Mm -hmm. And yet he has left the greatest legacy that any person who has ever been on earth could ever leave. Uh, and we look even besides Jesus, you look at the people and you think of the ones who have made a difference in your lives yeah. personally, as well as throughout history. You know, they weren't the Jezebels, they weren't the Adolf Hitler who were the full of pride, you know, or the Ahab, but we look and we say, you know, it is the Mother Teresa's, That's it's right. the people who are willing to be servants, who left that legacy and elevated over time, maybe not even Im immediately. And I love what God says to the fact that He, when we humble ourselves, He exalts us. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you know, anything that God does, it endures. Yes. And so when man gets involved and they have that self-promotion and it's all about me and they try to strive, how many times do we see it fall through their hands? Because mm -hmm. it, it's, it's not what God desires or honors and it just crumbles. And so I think, you know, we need to get out of the way and let God do his thing. That's right. Reminds me of that verse, you know, when the builders, if, if God's not in it, your That's building right. is in vain they, unless the Lord is building, building it. it. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to talk more about this topic of pride and humility when we come back. We'll be right back. I 
want it. I want it. I want it. Maybe what we need to do, Jamie, is follow the words on this plaque. Act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. Thank you, Glory House, for this great reminder on your Act Justly, Love Mercy wall plaque. Visit their website if you're interested in finding more things like this at gloryhouse.com. Welcome back. So how does humility affect trust or patience or forgiveness? What role does humility play in those things? Go ahead. (laughs) You have to be humble to be able to trust in the Lord or to trust in anyone. Uh, You know, if if you're a child and you trust in your daddy to catch you when you jump off of the stairs, you really have to to let go of yourself and your fears. And trust is an important part of humility as we trust in God. It's letting go of our own control and trusting in God's control. And I think, again, I love your illustration, Cindy, of a child with a parent, because the child who is really disrespecting the parent is really saying, I know what's better for me than (laughs) you know what's best for me. And we so often are that child with our Heavenly Father, where when we are saying no to Him, we're really saying, you know, I don't trust you. We're really saying, I know better when His Word has clearly said something to us. So instead of that obeying and trusting Him, it's like, that pride, but but I know better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, I would just say that because it. Um, I love the childlike faith. I mean, mm-hmm. it's you have to have the if you're going to be have a childlike faith, you have to have the humility to go go with that, and pride cannot. There's no room for pride because right. you can't operate. You can't have a prideful heart and walk in faith at the same time. Mm-hmm. That's right. Mm-hmm. That, 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 that's oil and vinegar that's mixing true. together. That's big time right there. You know, and you mentioned about um, as far as that whole patience. And I think, again, and the Lord has really convicted me of this, especially if I'm driving and I'm running late. And you get and you're going like, okay, come on, can't you move in front of me? And it's almost like that. All right, my time is more valuable than your time. I mean, that can be a subtle way of having that pride or come up. Or even like being yeah. a rule breaker. I know for me, I had no patience and would just walk up to the first class ticket line because I didn't want to wait in that long line, even though I didn't have first class tickets. (laughs) Not only was a little entitlement, but I think pride and entitlement go together, which is why that humility of saying, well, you know what? There's nothing that makes me better than any of these people in this long line. So, uh, yeah, I'm grateful that God found me. I ran into that same same idea of patience when I was on the highway the other day, and I got stopped by, uh, uh, looked, I couldn't tell it was an accident. But when I got up there, and I was very frustrated, I was thinking, oh, I need to, my my agenda is so important, I need to get going. When I got up there further, I saw that a terrible accident had happened. That humbles you, doesn't it? And that humbled me because I realized here I was worrying about my silly appointment and someone is fighting for their life. And I was immediately humbled and realized, you know, I needed to have that patience. And and I immediately prayed for that person. But it was very humbling, that moment. Mm -hmm. We have to get out of that mindset, it's not about me. That's right. It's not about me. It's not about me. God never said it's about you. Right. That's right. It's about him and about others. Right. You know, and I think the other the other one where it, a lot of people don't realize the connection between humility and forgiveness. Mm-hmm. And so often because that is such a huge yeah. um, place where we get fractured within the body of Christ or with relationships mm-hmm. is I can't forgive them. What we're really saying is. I would never have committed that sin, Mm -hmm. or that sin is worse than any of my sin. And when you're humble, you really come to the place of realizing there is not a single sin in the world that I'm not fully capable of committing. And apart from the grace of God, I would be committing. That's right. That's right. Mm-hmm. And also the hum- humility it takes to say, I was wrong. Yes. Uh, wow. Yeah. Because until right. you get to a place where you recognize, I was wrong. Then you have the pride that says, I don't need to apologize. What do I have to apologize for? And then recognizing that humble spirit brings about forgiveness. So we can receive forgiveness from both God and from From someone else. And the healing that comes. Mm -hmm. You know, as a parent, if you have offended your child, if you're willing to humble yourself and say, please forgive me, but also for the child. And they learn that when it's modeled more in that home too. That's what I was just going to say. There's one part where we recognize, like that's the internal part, but it's the owning up. It's that Mm -hmm. follow through. 
you know, because who wants to go to somebody and say, I really screwed up, yeah. right? And, but God, we honor God when we walk that out. That's right. You know, when we think of others as greater than ourselves. Yes. And to really be able to walk that out requires humility because so often we can see something about either their personalities or the way they're behaving and mm -hmm. think somehow that we are better than or that we mm -hmm. wouldn't make the same choice under the same situation. Mm -hmm. And yet a humble spirit will prevent us from making those sorts of judgments. We can, I mean, often are off base. And I, I'm sorry, Julie, I, I was just going to say, too, with a humble spirit, too, tying in with that is it also protects us because we exercise wisdom. Yes. When so God, I mean, wisdom and humility go hand in hand yep. and constantly. And you think about if, if someone was saying, and I, I just remember this one time where I got so mad because someone got a position at church and I was like, <laughs> That's right. why did, did she get it? Why did I? But you right. know what? God was protecting me because he was saying, you are not ready for this. You are not ready for the, what I have next. And I thought if I would have kept that prideful spirit within right. me, Wow, what de what what um, devastation that would not only cause in my walk, but the flock that would have been underneath my authority. That's it right. goes back to that whole idea of understanding God as the sovereign God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and He He's sovereign over your life, whether you get a promotion, whether you don't. That's right. What, That's right. Whatever happens in our lives, He is a sovereign God, and when we're willing to submit to that, we become more humble. Yeah, and there's a lot of blessings that we can miss out on because we're unwilling to humble ourselves. Yes. And I think there was a time when you had mentioned that, Melissa, that I was offered a position in the church and I truly thought it was beneath me at the time. And it really was like going, wait a minute, I was, you know, this and this and this, and you're asking me to be a secretary, you know, of this group. And I so often have thought, Lord, what did I miss out along the way? Mm -hmm. Because I was unwilling to humble myself. And that pride can stand in the way of the greater blessing that God wants well, to give to us. Pride, people think about pride as the heart Body spirit yeah. and just the thinking high of oneself. But when we come back, we're going to be talking about how pride can also be when we're thinking lowly of ourselves. It's all still about you. Yeah. So <laughs> stay tuned. We'll be right back. God's Word is life-changing, but some people just don't know how to study it, especially when they have a specific issue or need in their life. What if you had this? I want to introduce you to a topic-specific Bible study in a box where you will learn, pray, and conquer life's challenges through this easy-to-use Bible study so you can live victoriously. Through this study, you and your friends and family will receive the life-changing power of God's Word in a simple, effective way. This study contains 52 cards that have a scripture on one side and a prayer relating to that scripture on the reverse side. You can use the study in its entirety or one card at a time in so many different ways. Be inspired during your family devotionals. Your child will be inspired at bedtime. Read a new one each day before work. Or simply send them to friends and family who might need encouragement. The sky's the limit. To order the Bible study in a box, simply visit trueviewministries.org and click on the shop link. Bible study in a box is a great tool for memorizing scriptures and learning to pray effectively. Don't hesitate. Go to trueviewministries.org and click on the shop link at the top of the page to order today your Bible study in a box. Take your faith to a new level and order today. And we're back talking about pride and humility. We're going to talk about how to recognize pride and how to root it out and bring that humble spirit. And I just want to share a story with you guys. So I took my daughter. Um, she was learning to snowboard. And it was her very first time ever. But it was a really long run. She was going down a green circle. And we get near the bottom after like three hours of her falling every two feet. And she starts to recognize that there's a long line down there. And she doesn't want to go anymore. Mm -hmm because she was so afraid that those people were looking at her, talking about her, and recognized her weakness, which was that she didn't know how to snowboard as well as she thought she'd be able to. So where is the pride playing out in that situation? 
Well, in that, in that particular situation, uh, pride shows itself by not being able to admit that there's a weakness. And in a humble heart um, delights in that self-revealed weakness because it's in our weaknesses that we are made strong. That's where our character is developed. That's where God is able to work in our lives. And so uh, in that situation, not being able to admit that there's a weakness or that we can't do something in front of someone. And she was really focused on me. That, mm -hmm. that's I think that's where we can yeah. really look and go. You can begin to assess, is there pride when it's like, okay, when the I, the me begins to emerge, so it's like, mom, going, I'm so fat, this is a bad hair day, that that's pride. Yes. yes. We've mm -hmm. got to check that at the door. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. because it's all about me. What are some other ways we can recognize pride? Well, someone with pride holds on to their rights. They think they have the right to everything. They're entitled to everything, uh, whether it's you know the biggest and best trophy, whether they deserved it or not. And we see that in our world today. Uh, all the teams, no matter if they're the, the winning team, if they're the sixth place team, all of the children on the team have to get a trophy. And unfortunately, we're, we're giving our children this idea that they're entitled uh, to rewards and entitled uh, to certain rights. Um, but when you're humble, you yield, you yield your personal rights. One of the things that the Lord had spoken to me oh, many years ago, Cindy, is you can either be right or you can be in right relationship with me. And boy, does that get me because when I want to, you know, exercise and okay. exert my rights and it's like he, I hear that voice. Okay, you can be right or you can be in right relationship with me. That's right. Mm -hmm. And you know, pride also, uh, it's, it's about the approval of others. Yeah. You know, I think about the time when Jesus walked with the Pharisees and you know, the Pharisees wanted all eyes on them, mm -hmm. you know, and making sure that they looked good and they got all the accolades and so forth. And we do that still mm -hmm. today, don't we? Oh, I, mean, I never do. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. You must. Right alert. Right alert. Right. Right. Is there anything that Bible alert says not the same to me? Right. 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 Yes. right. Sure do you do. know what I mean? We right. for, of course we do. Everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. It's all about the approval, approval of man. Mm -hmm. And right. we have an audience of one. one. Yeah. Yeah. Got to get yes. that one down. You work with students all the time. What are some other ways you help instruct them? Well, I, I actually have a little chart that I use. And when I see a variety of prideful behaviors, I try to match it up with a humble a scripture that teaches us about humility. Um, a, lot of, a lot of times we see students trying to get revenge, get someone back mm -hmm. when uh, they've hurt them, rather than uh, just uh, humbling themselves and um, realizing that uh, this hardship or this difficulty um, is a way that God is teaching them and, and helping them to grow. Mm -hmm. So that's... Uh, that vengeance is mine, right. saith the yes. Lord. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <Not yours>. Right. <laughs> and we also see it when children try to compare themselves yeah. to other children. Um, you know, so-and-so has better shoes. So-and-so, you know, shops in a certain store. Right. How is that um, prideful to compare yourself to others? Well, you know, there's only one place that we go to find out who we should become and that is in God's Word. Yeah. Uh, God tells us who we should become uh, and what sh we should be like. The qualities that we should desire come from His Word. And uh, so, so that's where we go to find out uh, what the measure is, not what other people are doing or saying or wearing. Mm -hmm. Do you see a correlation between humility and even receiving instruction? So you're saying you're using a, a chart or you see when these children are doing this. What is the role humility plays in receiving instruction? Well, uh, humility is a big part of being able to submit to authority. Uh, teaching your children to obey in some respects is teaching them humility. Um, we exemplify that even in our cars as we're driving. Um, you know, you see a police officer as you're driving down the street. Mm -hmm. What do you say to your children? Uh, do you have something nice to say about that police officer? I always say, I'm so thankful that police officer is there mm -hmm. watching over our community because we're teaching our children to submit to the authority mm -hmm. that God God has placed over us. Uh, teaching them to obey is an important part, uh, and submission is an important part of, of humility. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, as it's humility to even receive it and act on it. Mm -hmm. We'll be back with our top tips in just a moment. Hi, my name is Dr. Mickey Crawford. I want to welcome you to the MediPetty Nail Spa. I'm a podiatrist in Butler, Pennsylvania, and as an extension of my practice, 
A few years ago, we opened the MediPedi. The MediPedi is a nail spa that's dedicated to providing you the classic pedicure and manicure services, but with the utmost in safety and cleanliness. All of our implements here are autoclave sterilized. That's what they do at the hospital when you have surgery. Our technicians have also taken extra coursework and training and are certified to care for patients who have diabetes, circulation, or nerve problems. So welcome to the MediPedi. And we're back with our top tips. For me, uh, my tip is to make sure that you get your children involved in opportunities to serve others. Humility really comes from putting others first and serving. Get them involved in nursing home ministries where they can push patients uh, around uh, the hospital or just visit with them. Take them to the food bank and help them to serve others who are in need. That's humbling to see the blessings that you have as compared to the sufferings that some others face. So that's my top tip. Okay. My top tip, I would say, um, more intimacy with God. Uh, pride and humility are a heart issue. And I'm just going to read in Galatians, it talks about the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And I believe the Lord wants more of His love to just totally captivate our hearts. So there's no room for pride when love has got the whole place. The way that I have dealt with pride is by looking at the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I love Philippians 2, 1 through 11, I think is something that everyone should look at, memorize on your heart, and you know, put it in there. But it talks about that we are to consider Jesus, who himself did not consider equality with God something to be grasped. But he made himself nothing and even humbled himself on a cross. Okay. And when we look at all that that's involved, in fact, one of the reasons that the cross is so rejected in our culture today is because it really represents the essence of what humility is. That's right. And it calls us to humble ourselves, to look on Him who is humble and gentle of spirit. And if we are to be Christians, which means Christ followers, we have no choice but to do the do, which is to humble ourselves, to take that action to clothe ourselves with humility, to humble ourselves, and to recognize we are either going to humble ourselves before God or we are going to be humbled by God. Mm. Thanks for joining us today. If you'd like to connect with us, we encourage you to check us out on our Facebook page or at trueviewministries.org. Click on the contact tab.